Hello, this is Kirill from forexboat.com and welcome back to the course on money management. And today we will talk about volatility. To start off with, I wanted to show you what prompted me to create this tutorial on this specific topic. So here's a chart. This chart, you'll find a lot of charts similar to this one if you search um, Google for Kelly Criterion. And so we've discussed the, the line that's uh, depicted here in blue, the return depending on your risk. But then a lot of these charts have this volatility curve in them. And like I never understood where it came from and what it actually meant. Um, if you look up volatility, you will never find a definition or it's very hard to find a definition of what this volatility exactly means. And I don't entirely agree with uh, this type of label for what they're trying to explain here, but we'll stick with it. We'll say that this is volatility of your account. And um, so I created this tutorial to explain exactly how this red line appears on the Kelly uh, chart. And I think it's important because like, I don't want to put anything in my tutorials that uh, I, don't, I don't know where it comes from. So it would be like pointless trying to explain it. But like I got to the bottom of this and I think it's important to understand uh, what this red line means and how it actually affects our decision on what risk uh, exposure to take uh, and how it works in combination with the Kelly criterion. Um, so today we'll talk about exactly that. We'll talk about where this red line comes from and what it exactly means. So let's jump straight into it. Um, so let's imagine that we have a starting balance of $100. And what we're going to do in this table is we're going to look at different scenarios of when we lose a certain percentage of our balance and we'll see how much it will take us to recover back to our starting balance. So let's say from our $100, we lose 10%. That means our new balance is $90. Now, in order to recover back to $100, it's not enough to earn 10%. Because if we earn 10% now, we will only have $99 on our account. So that means we have to earn more than 10% to recover back to $100. And if you calculate that percentage, it'll be 11%. So not a big difference. If you lose 10%, you only have to uh, earn 11% to get back to uh, where you were at the start. Now let's say your starting balance is $100 and you lose 20% of that. Um, your new balance is $80. And now, in order to recover back to $100, you need 25%. So, you, in order to get from 80 to 100, you need to uh, add another $20. You need to earn $20. And $20 is 25% of your current balance of $80. So, as you can see, the difference is slowly increasing. If before it was only 1% difference, now it's already 5% difference. Let's look at another one. Let's say if we have $100 and we lose 30%. Our new balance is $70. And to get back to $100, we need 43% gain. So we need to earn another $30 on our account. And that is 43% of our current balance of $70. Once again, the difference has increased even more. Uh, next, if we had $100 and we lost 40%, taking us down to $60 of balance, we would have to earn 67% to get back to $100. Uh, if we lost 50%, we would have to earn 100%. So this is a, an easy one. So if you lose 50% of 100, you go down to 50. In order to get back to 100, you need to earn 100% of your current balance, meaning another $50. So this, this is a good validation point. Um, next, uh, if you had $100, you lost 60%, you need to earn 150% to get back to 100. If you lost 70%, you need 233%. If you lost 80%, you need 400%. So you can see how rapidly this percentage is increasing. And um, it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger the uh, more um, the original loss is on the account. There's actually a formula that governs the relationship between them. And the formula looks like this where the green is the gain and the red is the loss. Y is your gain, X is your loss. Uh, if you plug into this formula those percentages that we saw, then you will see that um, this formula is the one that describes that relationship. So once 
Uh, we have the formula. We won't go into too much detail about how it's derived and stuff like that. I just put it um, on the slide just in case you're interested in math and you want to check these things for yourself. But um, if you plot this formula on the chart, that's what it'll look like. So it increases drastically. Um, and for just for references purposes, um, this is what the diagonal chart line looks like. So where y is equal to x. So if uh, for every whatever percentage you lose, you had to gain exactly the same percentage, that's what it would look like. As you can see, our red line is way um, beyond that. Um, at this stage, it looks nothing like the volatility uh, line that we saw in that original chart at the start of this tutorial. But um, let's do a couple of things to this chart. First of all, let's squash it vertically. So let's turn it into this chart. So we basically compressed it. Uh, and you can see that the diagonal line where y is equal to x, uh, which is supposed to be a diagonal, though it looks nothing like a diagonal, but we will still remember that that is our line where the percentages would, would have been equal. Uh, next, we'll just extend our vertical axis to make the chart look pretty. Uh, next, we will stretch it out horizontally, like that, um, and now it looks a lot more like the chart that we saw at the start of the tutorial. How about we take this chart and put it into our Kelly's chart, so combine the two. This is what, what it'll look like, and um, that is what we saw at the start. Well, except for the gray parts, which we'll remove in a second. So before we remove... Uh, the two gray lines, which is the vertical axis on the right and the diagonal, or what, what used to be the diagonal. Um, it's re important to remember, first of all, that this red chart has an axis of its own. So the blue axis on the left is only relevant to the Kelly chart, the green chart. Uh, the red line has its own axis and has nothing to do with the um, axis on the left. So that's one thing that's important to remember. And two, it's also important to remember that uh, the red line has been squashed and stretched out, uh, but the main concept is that it is always going to be above the diagonal where y is equal to x. And we will need to uh, remember that to, in order to make some observations in the further tutorial. So now I'm going to remove these two gray lines, and voila, you can see something very similar to what you saw previously. So here we've combined the volatility chart and the Kelly chart. So that's pretty much it for today. Uh, the main purpose of today's tutorial was to give you some background on this red line and kind of explain where it comes from and what it means. And uh, that will allow you to be more comfortable when we derive insights from the Kelly's chart in the next couple of tutorials, which are going to be the main takeaways from this section. On that note, we'll finish off today's tutorial. I look forward to seeing you next time, and until then, happy trading.